All right, got another uh, chapter roundup, so uh, let's just you know jump into it. So uh, first up is the rhetorical act, chapter five, um, talking about resources of arguments. Um, this goes into a lot of detail about um, different ways you can um, support your argument. Hang on a sec. And uh, different elements of arguments. <clears throat> so the first one is a claim, which is assertion, uh, an assertion. Um, it's basically something that you uh, um, say to be true. Um, and these can be wrong, of course, um, but they're, when used correctly, they're very powerful. Um, reasons, there's sort of the authorization or warrant that you have to make assertions, um, sort of like if you have logical backing to what you're saying. Um, an issue is a point of a dispute, so sort of the, the thing that you're arguing about. Um, invention, sort of the process of creating the argument, uh, drawing your different sources together. And then uh, the last one is, hang on, let me look at this, en enthymemes, I believe. Um, that's essentially the heart of the argument. Um, it doesn't have an English equivalent, but uh, it's essentially drawing all of these things together uh, to create a, a solid argument. All right, moving on to uh, readings in pop culture. We've got um, Hollyander writing about women in hip hop. Um, she writes that uh, love is typically seen as a weakness in hip hop. Um, so a lot of, uh, not a lot of artists uh, write about it or sing about it typically. Um, and when they do, it kind of uh, plays off of tropes that have been established, such as like ride or die or fly girls, um, some of the tropes that are in hip hop. Um, there are some rare examples of intimacy. Um, a few songs that she references in her piece about um, wanting to challenge each other sort of intellectually um, and uh, just about intimacy in general. But uh, yeah, on, on the whole, uh, hip hop is not typically about love. Um, and when it is, it comes in a really uh, surprising forms. Um, next up, we've got Wilkinson writing about country music. Um, country as a genre sort of represents a familiarity, um, sort of that the past will always continue, that the life that your father had will be the life that you will have, and the life that uh, your kids and your grandkids will have, sort of a guaranteed continuation of that. Um, he writes that um, country music may be very appealing to some people because uh, of this factor, um, but also that... Um, it sort of represents a, a conservative mentality, um, but that conservatism comes from a certain fear that um, that you will that you as a parent will not be able to relate to your children, um, and that through country music you can sort of project that um, having this sort of lifestyle that your father had that you want your kids to have um, will ensure that you will be able to relate to your children and also that they will be able to relate to you. Um, up next, we have Anderson writing about autotune. Um, he kind of is shedding some light on this topic and saying that autotune is everywhere. Um, we're just mostly unaware of it. Um, as humans, we sort of desire autotune because it, uh, it sounds good and we're attracted to good sounding things. Um, but once we find out that there is autotune being used, we sort of feel betrayed that we're being tricked in some way, that we're not hearing the authentic voice. Um, there are uh, some artists who will use it a lot. Um, the example used prominently is uh, Kesha, um, who uses autotune quite a bit, especially in her early work. But um, yeah, but then there's many more, uh, most artists in the industry now, the, um, Anderson says, uh, use autotune for almost everything. Um, if not for the entire song, at least to touch up certain areas and make it sound better. And then the last uh, section that we have is from Vasquez writing about uh, Chicano music or uh, Mexican-American music. Um, they write a lot about how representation is important and uh, especially how we want to see ourselves in the artists and the media that we consume. Um, they write a lot about their childhood growing up in Los Angeles um, and wanting to see like sort of uh, basically Mexican rock um, that represented the, the sort of struggle that they were going through and talking about um, the lives that they were living and how they um, spoke English and Spanish and sort of had that dual identity and how um, not a lot of the popular media at the time was representing that so they had to get it from sort of their own community from the, the people that they were sharing this experience with. Um, it's sort of an interesting uh, topic that they covered is how um, music isn't political if it is your life and so to me that's kind of um, important because a lot of people are going through a lot of uh, hard things in their lives and um, they might get blamed or sort of um, put down for singing about what they know um, 
because it's too political or whatever but um it's not political if it's your if your true experience and uh yeah that's it